Hey everyone, it's LS, and this is going to be a VOD review of one of the most anticipated games of LCK so far, and it's one that I'm really excited to watch. It will be done in a speed format, so times two speed. It's going to be Kingzone versus Griffin. So they ban Yasuo first. Uh, Chovy starting, so you have to entertain that Zoe uh, is potentially going to be a pick. They ban away Tom Kench from Gorilla, Nocturne also being banned away. I think that Talia uh, is a champion that a lot of people have to keep in mind, although I'm not sure if she's enabled uh, during these games, or I don't, I don't know what the rules are on Talia. So Kingzone ends up taking Zoe first. And obviously this is just a takeaway from Chovy, who is extremely adept at piloting that champion. Griffin's now hovering Aurelia. Talia was banned away, so I guess that she is allowed to be picked. And then they actually go for Sejuani, which is quite interesting. Um, because there's still so many junglers available. Uh, Xin Zhao, Graves are definitely still on the table. Trundle is up. And obviously this can also even bait a, a Trundle pick out of King Zone um, when, you, when you take the Sejuani as early as you do. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure why King Zone doesn't just respond with jungle AD or like jungle support here. I think that showcasing the Mundo as early as they did uh, is actually quite a mistake. Um, I, th I think this is, a, this is a really, really big draft error. Uh, so I I've talked about Mundo a lot in the past in that he exists because champions don't exist that punish him. He's not a champion. A lot of people are talking about him as if he's this blind pick monster uh, and you can just pick him regardless of what the enemy is going to draft. Mundo, this is already looking quite bad for Mundo. Yes, he has a lot of tenacity, but the thing is is that you're walking into three unknowns, and that just doesn't make any sense to me, why you would pick him as early as they are. I think that this is the first error so far uh, in the draft phase, where this should definitely just be a support or an ADC, um, and then the Trundle pick is obvious. You just snap Trundle as soon as they show uh, Sejuani. So, so far, I think King Zone's made an error. And now Shen being locked in. I even think that there's options for Griffin at this point to even just go into uh, some of the hyper carry ADCs that we, we've talked about uh, on stream in recent weeks. Um, Darius is being banned away, so obviously Kingzone is entertaining that the Shen could just be a support Shen, um, and Darius could definitely still go top lane and obviously be flexing to bottom. Um, Ash is now banned away as well, which is really interesting. Um, taking that away from Prey, and now Griffin's going to pick here, and if you're Griffin, if the Shen is indeed top lane, and then you pick, uh, I think that you just end up picking AD here, and then you, you save support for the counter pick um, to skew the matchup uh, and make sure that you can decide what your ADC is also going to pick for a summoner spell. Um, if the, the Shen is indeed uh, support, um, I think that you probably just pick AD and reserve counter pick top. Well, not counter pick top, but you, you hide your top laner uh, for counter comp. They pick the Morgana, and this is really interesting because obviously the Morgana could be entertained as a support champion, and this could be saying to Kingzone that Shen is indeed going up into top lane. Um, Lucian now being hovered by Kingzone. And Rakan now also being hovered. Also, it should be... I have not seen these games yet. Um, all I know is the end result. I, I don't know what goes on uh, within the games. So I'm looking forward to this. And Braum ends up being locked in. So... Already, before we even go to Griffin's last pick, something that's really, really strange to me um, is Griffin has yet to show their last hand, and the Braum, Trundle, and Mundo can actually just be walking into a trap, um, and then Atrox insta-locked in. Okay. So Griffin's going with Morgana Shen bottom lane. I have no idea how that's going to work out. I've never seen that in solo queue. Uh, it's definitely very interesting. So we, we can just talk about some of these team compositions here. So Zoe is obviously a menace, and in later stages of the game, Atrox and Aurelia and Sejuani become more reliant on their ultimates in order to get engages off onto the King Zone team. Um, the other problem that Griffin will end up having is later in the game, uh, King Zone is able to safely turtle their blue side jungle and prevent Griffin from being able to get a Baron. Uh, and then Zoe can poke from the vicinity of her blue side jungle over the wall into the river and eventually try to move Griffin out of uh, river and just poke back at them. So that's a gear that King Zone uh, has access to that Griffin doesn't really have a very good answer to uh, if, if they're summoners, like they don't have any summoner spells. Um, 
The other thing is, is that if, if Lucian does end up getting ahead against this team composition, he can actually be extremely oppressive. So if I'm looking at this from Peanut's perspective, I think that the most important lanes is to play right side of the map. Um, so you, you play obviously around Dragon, you play around mid, and you play around bottom, and you ensure that Prey and Gorilla end up getting ahead. Um, because if you can transition Prey out into the map, it can obviously put a lot of pressure onto Chovy and then Sword on the Atrox and the Aurelias, respectively. Um, so I, I think that King Zone has a lot of gears. I think that all of their attention needs to be on the right-hand side. I think that the Mundo pick is still awful um, where they ended up picking it. Um, I think that Mundo in a standalone here, I think he can be problematic, but there definitely are some 2v2 and 3v3 situations that can unfold in mid to late game where Mundo is not going to be the menace that you would expect him to be. Um, yes, he's going to have tenacity, uh, but I, I think that as much CC, uh, I mean, he's going to have the Mercury Treads, um, he's not going to be able to get that Spirit Massage uh, until later, so he's going to have the Sunfire Cape and whatnot. Uh, there's already going to be magic resistance out of Griffin, so the burn from the Sunfire Cape is not going to be doing massive amounts of damage. Um, I think the Trundle is one of the dynamics that they definitely have going for them. Um, the Braum, however, you, you can argue that he can be used defensively with his, uh, his ultimate and the stand behind me if Griffin tries to go for an extremely hard engage. Um, but they have so many angles that they can go for these engages and they have the Aurelia, they have the Sejuani, uh, and they have the Morgana. And the Morgana also offers a way for Griffin to offer counter poke against Kingzone um, if Griffin ends up getting a lead uh, in the early into mid transition. Um, then just the same way that Zoe can actually poke people under turret, Morgana's going to be able to turn on that gear for them. Alright. So... With all of that being considered, um, when you know that Prey and Gorilla need to accelerate and get ahead, and when you know that Peanut should be playing the right-hand side of the map uh, as Blue Side Trundle, um, I think that from Tarzan's perspective, you should primarily actually just be playing around Sword up in top lane and be ensuring that Chovy is gank immune uh, from the left-hand side. Um, and then because Herald is actually so important for Griffin, because it really helps with penetrating that mid-tier 1 turret, because they, they lack a reliable way to get onto it without an ADC and the only ranged champion basically being that Morgana, um, if, if Zoe is able to protect her tier 1 turret's HP long enough, then it becomes quite a predicament of how to get it down. So I think from Tarzan's uh, point, point of view, Playing left side, prioritizing Herald around the 12 to 15 minute mark is the most important thing for him. Uh, Morgana and Shen should be left on an island, similarly to how Khan should be left on an island. Tarzan. First Drake of the game is Mountain. It's super important for everyone to get that Mountain. I'm going to assume that Morgana is going AP, and then obviously Atrox and Aurelia really, really want the, uh, the ramp to their damage. And then likewise, Kingzone has a lot of champions that benefit from it. So this is not like a, a weak Infernal. So okay, we're, we're starting off the game, and Pina is just doing a red into bottom gank right away. And they're going to pick up the kill onto Viper. He does have the teleport available to him, and then Peanut's going to path up right into the Scuttle Crab. And this is interesting that Tarzan didn't want to... Let's see here. He could have done two more auto attacks and then gone for the smite and got that over Peanut. And then he can transition into his wolves and he can just simply do the wolves. But I, it looks like that because Zoe has priority right here, you can see that Chovy is still level one and Zoe's level two. He doesn't want to get into this really weird spot where even though he's going to go up to full HP, you know that Peanut's going to have his pillar soon, although they should have this on cooldown and they should be able to say trundle no pillar, trundle no pillar. Um, Peanut's going to have vision, and the Scuttle Crab would be around here while it's getting hit. If Peanut Smite steals it away from Tarzan, and then if BDD can actually bubble Tarzan, then what ends up happening is Tarzan gets so chunked that then Peanut just proceeds into Tarzan's jungle, steals his wolf camp away, and then he runs around, runs through mid lane, Aurelia backs up towards the left-hand side, BDD just controls and neutralizes the, the wave, Tarzan transitions into left side river, completes the next Scuttle Crab, and then he can recall safely or Peanut can uh, recall after getting Subtle Crab. 
now what will happen from here is Tarzan will come off uh, the fountain recall. He'll proceed into his red, and then it's just a really ugly spot because he's going to be getting to his red around the same exact time that Peanut is getting back onto the map and reestablishing priority. The difference here is that the only rubber banded camp that Tarzan's going to have available to him is the Gromp. Obviously, he wants to prioritize getting his red first, so if he comes off fountain, he's going to end up doing red, and then he has a very ugly route because if he goes up to Golems, then it becomes a little bit of a wasted duration to path back down into Wolves, and then all the way over to his Gromp. Uh, then depending on Scuttle RNG, if the, if the Scuttle Crab ends up pathing on the, the left-hand side of the map, then this can just get super, super ugly, super, super fast, and Tarzan can just fall massively far behind. Sword suddenly becomes under a lot of pressure, and Chovy likewise is under a lot of pressure. Then what ends up happening from here is Peanut can just slide all the way back onto the right-hand side of the map and actually go in to approach the rubber-banded uh, Gromp that would be coming up from Tarzan. So... This is something that can happen from this scuttle crab. So I just mapped out about three minutes for you um, of what things can potentially occur uh, in the event that Tarzan would go for the scuttle and if Peanut ends up stealing it away, and then if BDD ends up hitting a bubble. So right here, Peanut gets the scuttle crab, and you can see that he just transitions immediately through river. And the only variation difference here is that had they chunked Tarzan, um, he would have been able to go up and take the wolves away, and then Tarzan would recall and have to go into his red. Uh, I'm sure that some people might think that Tarzan can just neglect recalling, and he can just go to his red immediately, but uh, in, in that case, um, if Trundle ends up checking on the wraiths or something, or checking on the red, things get very, very ugly. So now Peanut's actually electing not to recall. Um, he's just clearing out all of his side of the map. And we can see that not too much is actually happening up in top lane. Very interesting. Uh, Sword actually has minion dematerializer. And now Peanut's just power farming really, really, really hard. What this will end up doing is he can transition right into his golems. He can eat that. And then he has rubber banded camps on the top left-hand side of the map. And if Tarzan transitioned into his left-hand side, it's unlikely that he's going to be top looking for a gank against Sword um, around the level five, five and a half, six mark. Uh, so Khan's not respecting this, and definitely not playing around it, but Griffin ends up picking up a kill. So let's talk about this really quick. So this is actually uh, on Khan. So you can see that Khan has a massive wave, and he definitely has the ability to go and get an even deeper ward. You can also see that he has the Scuttle Crab, and he has a ward over here from BDD. There's no reason ever to just have this ward. There's absolutely no reason in the world not to just come in here, path here, get bumped on uh, by Tarzan, and then just run down through river. What'll end up happening is yes, the lane state is gonna be in an awkward place, but you have to consider something. The loss that Khan is incurring in top lane is also going to be neutralized or negated by the fact that Tarzan is going to fall further behind than Peanut inside of the jungle. And that's because Tarzan is making this choice to stay up in the top lane brush and make this play against Khan. So while King's own Khan will fall behind, Griffin's Tarzan will fall behind of Peanut, and Peanut is a more integral piece to the puzzle, especially in the early mid to transition, making sure that Prey can get ahead, securing the Infernal Dragon, and then being able to rotate Prey to the top half side of the map so that you guys can also have control over the Herald so that Griffin cannot actually get down the mid tier one turret. Khan makes a really fucking huge blunder. And it should have been vocalized that there is no universe that Sejuani can be anywhere else. Now, obviously, this is a little bit of a gamble because maybe Khan is just expecting, oh, okay, Sejuani is just going to be recalled because why would she be top right here? He also could have flashed the knockup, but even if he flashes the knockup, you know. Now they're going to shove in this wave and they should shove in the next wave together. I like what Peanut's doing. He's responding with an Infernal Drake. And they shove in the next wave, and I can't tell if Tarzan actually absorbs some of the XP. I think that he actually should, because you have to know that you're falling behind uh, of Peanut. Um, he gets the Blue Smite, and he gets Boots Tier 1. Uh, and I think that he did this just so he can get back onto the map faster, um, because he, he wants to retain the ability to, to potentially have priority. So, he gets back onto the map. Scuttle Crab actually RNGs in his favor. And now, take another look at the replay, but the replay doesn't really matter. Khan's just being very disrespectful. Uh, he's not playing around the gank properly. I think the ward that he placed in the river is absolutely terrible, um, and it should have just been inside of the tri brush. And even if he would have gotten shoved out of the lane, and then the lane ends up freezing, he can just recall um, and eventually go back up to top lane. And yes, he's going to be at a disadvantage, but so is the enemy jungler. So here, um, Peanut shows on the map, and you can see that Peanut has all these rubber banded camps. And now, because BTD has priority in mid lane. Uh, BDD is going around with Peanut, and they're looking to get some sort of intel on Tarzan. 
And now Khan is just clearing out some vision, and now Peanut's just going to transition into all of his rubber banded camps, and then transition that smoothly right into the the red buff. Uh, and I do like how Peanut actually has uh, the Tiamat. I think that he's acknowledging that he can just play a farm, a farm fest. Um, and when I said earlier on that uh, the key pieces of BDD and Prey being able to get ahead, or Prey being able to get ahead most notably, um, you don't have to, Peanut doesn't need to gank in order to make this occur. He can simply power farm and transition to the right hand side, and then he can place Vision inside of Tarzan's uh, blue side jungle, and he can restrict access to the bottom half of the map and just let Lucian accelerate forward. You can already see down in bottom lane that despite, I mean, in addition to uh, having the one kill on Prey, there's also an 11 CS lead. I'm not sure exactly what the size of the minion wave is down in bottom lane uh, right now, so maybe Morgan is just waiting on getting a little bit. But bottom lane's in a fantastic spot. You have Infernal Drake right now, and if Khan just hadn't made an error, Griffin would have been in a really, really, really ugly spot. Okay, so Lehenz ends up getting shoved out of lane right there. And it looks like he's going to be forced to recall. And you can see that Peanut's not really doing any of the intel uh, type plays. He's just going to path straight up into, it looks like, the Scuttle Crab. And then he's probably going to hand off the blue to BDD. We have a teleport coming in from Morgana. Lucian doesn't have the calling available. Um, I think that, that recall is really disrespectful. I don't think there's a reason to make Gorilla do this. Uh, you could have just backed up. It's not the end of the world either way. Um, at this point, you can see that Peanut is pathing down. Uh, it's likely to go to his golems. I don't know what his XP is. Uh... So I can't tell if the, the path is actually efficient or not. But right now, as the game stands, uh, King's Zone is ahead. Um, so this is... I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how the, the rest of the game unfolds. You can see that Peanut is actually looking for potentially a lane gank. Um, but I don't know why he would be doing that. And now you can see that he just recalls again right into the rubber banded camps. And he just wants to utilize the XP. So even though uh, Prey and Gorilla aren't falling behind per se, uh, they're not getting ganked and Sejuani's not really achieving anything, Peanut just sort of looks like a chicken running around with his head cut off. Um, he's just power farming, but I, I, I don't like the way in which he's power farming. I think that uh, his camp should be inverted. I think that the rubber banded camp should actually be bottom to top instead of top to bottom. Um, and the reason that I say that is also because of the thing that I talked about earlier where Griffin, in theory, should have actually been playing around Sword um, even more so after he got the first kill. Um, so, like like most things uh, in VOD reviews, we'll angle it from uh, the team's perspective that's, that's making the most errors and how dramatic it is uh, relative to their win cons and what they should be looking to do. So, here Peanut is getting some intel, and you can see that Gorilla is now going with him, but the problem is, is he, he's getting intel... And then he goes around, and you can see that Gorilla isn't with him, and BDD is, does not have priority. BDD has absolutely zero priority. And so he gets hit by Tarzan right here, and then Griffin was first to collapse, and even though Prey had the lane in a really good spot. Let's look at this. So you can see the lane state, you can see another giant wave's about to crash, and Prey's going to be able to go with you. So if you're Peanut right here, there's no reason not to just let BDD clear this wave and then wait for Prey and Gorilla to both be with you, because then you can move up, clear out the control ward if there is one inside of this brush, and then Gorilla can go up with you and then clear out this brush. And if you end up needing a teleport or something, Khan has it on standby, and Khan's lane state is actually fine, and Sword shouldn't be able to counter him. So we're going to go teleport for teleport, and that would be okay. But Peanut is a little bit too ambitious, and he ends up walking too far forward, and you can see that Prey ends up getting there a little bit late. So far they end up trading, but then they end up throwing everything away. So Peanut, with uh, the classic, you know, the classic running around like a chicken with his head cut off, um, moving way too fast, not identifying... Uh, the mid lane did not have priority, not identifying that Lucian was about to be able to move, but wasn't quite in position to move. And had he just been a little bit more patient, Morgana would have been tied up underneath turret. She would have used, uh, you know, some of the mana. She would have been late to the dragon, and then they would have had a superior angle. And then if BDD can actually join from the top hand side, and then you call in Mundo's teleport, that would be fine. If Sword ends up uh, electing, or Griffin decides, okay, we're actually not going to fight this Infernal Drake, we're going to give it up, and then Tarzan goes back into the vicinity of his own jungle, eats this, eats this, Morgana eats underneath the turret, and then top tier one ends up dying. That's fine. Because now... 
With no neutral objective on the right hand side of the map, Sword is left without anything to do. And now Sword does not have the luxury of actually overextending past the Gromp on the left hand side, so Khan can just comfortably farm from right here. Sword's not going to be able, or Sword and Tarzan are not going to be able to do anything. This is not a point in the game where they're going to be able to convert immediately into the Herald without obviously giving it up. And then because of the advantages that Prey and Gorilla are going to have inside of bottom lane, with in addition to the double Infernal Drake completely ramping Lucian's damage, um, it's then very easy for Peanut to transition into playing left-centric uh, side of the map, protecting Khan, letting him perma-freeze top lane, and then you basically just say to Sword, okay, every minute that passes now, your lead is going to further gradually die, because you are going to naturally be zoned out of minions, because I can just protect my lane, because there's no turret uh, far up in the lane to make you, or make me come to you. So right here, interestingly, let, let's rewind one more time. So after all is said and done, this is, this is the really, really strange thing. Okay, there's 24 seconds. 24 seconds on Prey. I don't understand why you can't get Infernal. Getting Infernal and stripping it away from King Zone is more important than getting back to your camp and bottom. Because Sword already has priority on the top left-hand side of the map, okay? Even if BDD comes mid, shoves in this wave, and Aurelia ends up losing 6 CS, the stats and the, the bolstering that the Infernal Drake gives is so much more valuable. And then you have the luxury of just playing defensive for the next couple of minutes, and then all that you have to do is prevent the Rift Herald. And now you can see that some of the advantage, I mean, Prey, Prey should just have been so far ahead, but they were not, I mean, Peanut just botched it. And a lot of, a lot of the games of Kingzone that I've watched lately, Peanut has definitely been the weak point. Next, Chovy ends up getting priority in mid lane, and they just transition this very smoothly right into an Infernal Drake. And then we ask ourselves, what is Peanut doing during all of this? These are the parts in the game where I begin to get semi-frustrated because you just see a gigantic lead just go completely to waste because of poor jungler pathing. And so right now Aurelia is absolutely enormous and I really like the atomization out from Chovy, has the mercury treads, doesn't just blatantly rush Trinity Force, that's a really good skill shot by BDD. Ends up hitting Chovy, chunking up quite a bit, bottom lane is keeping up very well. Now you can see they even get a lot of chip damage on Chobi's tier 1 turret. So, Kingzone still have the Zoe component going for them, even though Aurelia is really far ahead. Their team composition can actually handle Aurelia. Well, let's see what ends up happening here. You can see a teleport coming in from Sword, and you can see that the teleport from Mundo seems to be a little bit late. You can just tell that it's late. Look at, look at the teleport difference. Remember, this is in times two speed. So the teleport from Khan, very, very, very slow. Sword just able to get there, light up Prey, and Prey is one of the most important pieces towards the extended fights. BDD is able to do a lot, but it's very, very important for Lucian to be in these mid-game, mid-late skirmishes. He offers so much, and he's so important. You can see, tries to end up killing Lehens right there. Viper is able to come down, Sword gets the knock up. Doesn't really matter that BDD was already there. Cinderhulk now completed for a peanut. Sunfire Cape out for Mundo. He doesn't actually have Mercury Treads. He ended up going into Ninja Tabby, which is surprising. I guess he's mostly just doing that for the Atrox and the Aurelia. 
Um, but I think that w when you when you entertain how the team fights are going to be fought out, you're mostly just protecting Prey and BDD. You're not trying to get to the backline because there is no backline for Griffin. So why do you actually need the Ninja Tabby? You can just get the Mercury Treads, have the CC, have the you know a little bit of MR against the Sejuani, the Morgana. Um, not really quite sure what's going on there with the itemization. Likewise for Trundle as well. The, the Trundle item, I mean, they both have Ninja Tabby, and it makes absolutely no sense. So now King Zone is down about 3k, and this should not have been happening after the opening. Lucian even has a QSS, so that's going to enable him to go ham in some of the fights. There's also another Infernal Drake coming up in a minute. Khan should just probably run to it right now, and it does seem like he is just going to be running into mid lane. I can't imagine that he has an item to complete. King Zone looking to try to get this bottom tier 1 turret. What is BDD doing? Okay. Well, they almost ended up picking up Tarzan. And, okay. Ultimates come out. BDD trying to chase down Tarzan. And you can see that Sword's going to get top tier 2, and that's completely fine. Just get the Infernal Drake. All you have to do is get Infernal. So King Zone's going to get the second Infernal Drake in exchange for top tier 2. And that's okay. Because again, remember, you, you look at Zoe's, uh, Zoe's turret in mid lane, and it's still semi-healthy. Um... And Rift Herald, okay, well, never mind. They use Rift Herald. They end up killing it. I didn't realize they were just going to cast it right at this point. Okay, so they cast it, the turret goes away. That's kind of bad. And the reason that this turret is so important is because if you're King Zone, what you can end up doing is you plant Khan in bottom lane. Okay, you plant Lucian right up here, right? You have Lucian Eat Waves up here. You have Zoe stay around mid lane, or you have Lucian occasionally come into mid lane and eat waves, and you deny any ability for Griffin to try to get this turret, because all they're going to do is try to poke with Viper on Morgana. And then in the later stages of the game, once the minion waves are able to be repelled extremely quickly um, by the champions on King Zone, uh, if Griffin is trying to set up for a Baron, you can control this area with control wards, or pink wards, whatever, control over there as well. And then you can just play from this spot, and then Zoe is able to offer a lot of poke against the team that's trying to fortify the river. And you can use this to just keep enailing Trundle and Mundo and Zoe to keep scaling. And even though Lucian's not going to be doing um, a massive amount of scaling, the problem is, is that the Griffin team composition will be doing anti-scaling. They're going to be going down uh, fourth item forward. Um, and so while you have quite a few champions that are not slowing down, the enemy team is slowing down, and you just have to endlessly wait for it, and then eventually your team composition will take over and you'll win. Now, Ocean Drake's coming up next. And so if you're King Zone, you do not want to take it. You want to make Griffin bleed by taking it, and then you want to try to get some sort of control elsewhere on the map in exchange for them being able to get a, uh, an Ocean Drake. Okay, now Sword doing his best to push in bottom lane. And you can see now they're going to try to get chip damage. And Peanut ends up getting hit right there. They end up completely decimating Lehens. Mundo stays in bottom lane. And at this point, you just back off. You wait for the wave again. Lucian eats it. Zoe goes top lane. Mundo stays bottom lane. You push the waves. Rinse, wash, repeat. And you just have to keep doing this. And <clears throat> remember... We said in Champion Select, Griffin is infinitely more reliant on their ultimates and their flashes than King Zone. So all that King Zone's looking to do is constantly play around their lack of summoner spells and ultimates. Because King Zone, no summoner spells, no ultimates is greater than Griffin, no summoner spells, no ultimates. Just because of the natures of the comp. And then King Zone has the luxury of the fact that Griffin doesn't have a proper way to penetrate this turtle that we're seeing right here. As long as King Zone holds this phalanx, then Zoe is able to provide constant pressure to the river. And without any sort of mountain drakes, it's not like Griffin is just able to threaten, okay, well, we're just going to burst down the Baron at four items or five items. Right here, we have Khan in bottom lane. And you can see he has Sunfire and Warmogs, not able to go for the Spirit Passage, which obviously Mundo loves a lot. Continuing to push. King Zone should not feel obligated to rush anything. Even though they're down 4k gold, the team compositions scale better. 
So 800 gold to King's Own is 1,000 gold to Griffin. So even though it looks bad at the top of the screen, also factor in the double Infernal Drake, and things are actually in an okay spot for uh, King Zone. King Zone should have ran away with this game after the opening. Tarzan was so far behind. Now let's take a look at this. This is the classic. Um, I like to call this the Nayram. It's when, uh, well, this is a version of the Nayram. This is the little Nayram. This is when uh, teammates are arbitrarily in mid lane to eat a minion wave that is going to come to them anyway 15 seconds later, despite getting no neutral objective or control over vision. So you can tell right here that it's extremely important for Praying Gorilla to be in mid lane in order to get this wave at this exact moment, because if they don't, they're going to lose the game. Except for the fact that none of that's true whatsoever, and if they just sat all the fuck back here behind the flames and just waited for the wave like patient, you know, people, um, this team cannot actually just go for Baron because it'll just blue trinket it, and then you'll laugh at them, and then Zoe will unlock the lane here, Zoe will come over here like the fucking lolly that she is, and then she'll poke them while they sit in the river, and then the wave will come in again, and then Griffin won't know what the hell to do with it, so they're gonna push it again instantaneously, and Aurelia's gonna queue it out of anger, she's gonna queue, 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 queue with the Morgana fucking desecrated soil thingy, and then the wave's gonna come in here again, and Lucian's gonna sit there with the lollipop in his mouth, and he's gonna eat it right here! right in front of the turret, because it's going to come in anyway, and you get absolutely nothing by eating the wave here. Nothing. But, you know, win more. So here we have a 1v1 going down in the bottom lane. And now King's own. Let's take a look here. So it looks like people are on different pages, because this turret definitely should have fell. And Prey doesn't know what a flash is. Everyone's on different pages. You shouldn't be looking to teamfight right here. You should just be looking to have a concave, get the turret, and then back up immediately. Especially because Khan is going to be able to get the turret on this wave. Getting this turret does what for the gold? Getting this turret does what for the game state? Getting this turret does what for future teamfights? Nothing. It's just luxury. There's no reason to put yourself in a position where the enemy has a choice to engage onto. And now they're just going to lose the game. So, when I was coming into this VOD review and the series, I was expecting Griffin to outplay or decimate King's Own. But what I'm seeing in the games is that King Zone looks like um, they're still in Europe. So I, I don't really know what is going on here. I think this right right here. King Zone's beating themselves. And it's not to take away from Griffin. They're obviously capitalizing on the mistakes. They're punishing the mistakes. But Griffin drafted themselves into a little bit of a nightmare. The early game was King, King Zone just had the game. The game was over at six minutes. The game was just over. And King Zone throws it away. Peanut doesn't know how to path. Peanut's playing fucking Pokemon Go while he's on the uh, the LCK stage. So now with the Baron, you look at Griffin, and I mean uh, Griffin at this point because because King Zone are so weak. And I, like, right here, if you're Griffin, you can 1-3-1, one, one, but top lane is actually really big, so it is naturally slow pushing and it's going to crash into the wave. Um, but it, it, I just want to talk about some of the options that Griffin has available to them here. They can easily 1-3-1 one, one with uh, Chovy likely being bottom and then Sword actually being top. And the reason that I say that is because the top or the bottom tier 2 turret is actually still up. So, um, because the bottom tier 2 turret is still up, you would want uh, the teleport lists champion. Yes, I'm aware that Sword does not have teleport either. Um, but you would, you would want the champion that would traditionally be with the rest of the team to be pushing into the lane that the, the rest of the team can actually unite to. Um, 
So in that case, let's replace Aurelia with someone else, um, you know, or let's just say that Atrox would be the member that the team wants to be with, then Atrox would be in bottom and the team would rotate down into bottom after crashing wave into mid. Um, they have a lot of options available. They are going onto the turret and you can just see that Kingzone does not have a very good way of dealing with being behind um, unless Zoe is able to do something or repel the enemy team. The problem is that the Baron, um, and the lead that Griffin has, they have the, you know, they have the Ocean Drake, which actually, make, it, it's quite big with Baron pushes. Anything after, like, 12 minutes, Ocean Drake's just a joke. Um, if you end up getting Baron, it becomes not a joke anymore. It actually becomes a, a pretty serious problem for the enemy team. They have the Infernal Drake that's going to bolster some of their stats. They have a massive gold lead. And so in addition to the Baron enhanced minions and the Baron stats and all these good things, Zoe cannot reliably repel the opponents the way that she traditionally should be able to. And so in, in cases like this, Kingzone has a very, very, very bad team at resisting Baron. And sometimes you see team compositions that are very good at resisting Baron. They have a lot of wave clear. They have a lot of disruption. They have a lot of ways to repel the enemy back. You know, it's just trying to farm his jungle. I don't like that he's using smites. Um, enhancing the speed at which he clears these camps is irrelevant. It would just be better to ha for him to have charges stacking up. And you know, even if the argument is that he has two stacks and you know he's going to still have one left over, it's still pointless. You should just have the red smite for the fights. There's absolutely zero reason to enhance your clear by two seconds and just give away a smite charge because you don't know what's going to happen in you know the foreseeable future. Ocean, or Mountain Drake is coming up next. So King Zone needs to stabilize uh, for the next four minutes or so, probably. And I'm just throwing out a number there uh, to assume when Lucian can complete into another item, and then for some of the other champions to complete into another item. And you can see that King Zone is just trying to juggle the side waves. And Griffin right now is trying to make use of the 131, but it is infinitely weaker than uh, if they have the Baron. So you can see that it's able to be repelled in this case. Now let's take a look at what happens down here. So Peanut uh, misses the pillar, doesn't get the, the knockup, and then just leaves uh, leaves Khan there to die. Khan does not know what a flash is either. He should have probably just flashed over the wall. Um, one of the thoughts on Khan, you know, if he had teleport up, I could maybe support the notion that he's thinking, okay, I'm going to die and keep teleport for Baron in case they go for Baron. If he had teleport available, and he, okay, that's a nice champion. If he had teleport available and the enemy team goes for Baron, you do want to save your teleport uh, for the Baron. You teleport into the Baron, you have the flash still available. Um, and even if you end up losing you know, a turret there or something, it's more important to capitalize on the Baron. So now let's take a look at this. So Shen is dead. That's really nice. Um, and then as soon as Shen dies, you can see that Peanut is saying go or something. And I think he does not understand that he's not that tanky. And they did not have Prey. You're sitting here watching this, and my eyes are bleeding. I'm having fun. I don't know what he's doing. They got a pick, and he managed to pick a fight without numbers. They wanted a fight without prey. A straight-up sustained damage fight without prey. Okay. Right. Okay, look, look, look. I mean, maybe you can 4v4, but you can't 3v4. <laughs> hey, guys. All right, let's do this. Yeah, all right, let me try to get the trundle pillar against the, uh, the, the black shield. Okay. All right, I got a really ultimate, guys. All right, Lucian's still it's, not here. It's sped up. It's time to do speed. Lucian's still not here, guys. I think this is going to... Oh, what? My god. It's just so lucky there's, there's nothing else. I feel like I just watched Krillin try to, like, this is like fucking Hercule running at Cell. That was the most Krillin thing I've ever seen in the LCK. <laughs> Krillin going for the team fight. <laughs> Krillin was going for the team fight. He's engaging. <laughs> oh my god. To that was Leroy him. Jenkins. <laughs> this is Leroy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> god damn it, Peanut. Oh, man. He's not even on BBQ. He can't even say at least I got chicken. <laughs> Holy shit. 
Can so can someone make like a a, so, or a a sound over of Leroy Jenkins and Peanut right here? Because th this just encapsulates his entire play this this game. This just says it all. All right. It's really just so lucky. <laughs> It just runs in. Uh... <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. You know what Zoe asks? Zoe asks Shen if she's ever if he's ever seen a girl come before. That's what that's what Zoe asks. <laughs> oh God. All right, so I, I I just I can't see a universe in which Griffin throws this. I like that they're letting Atrox just solo, solo the dragon, and now they can just one three one. They even put the hens up in top lane. I actually really like that. At this point, with the Baron, he is able to push. It looks like BDD is trying to do some damage to him, but there's just such a massive wave. BDD can't risk anything going too wrong, and then obviously the Stand United is available. So you can see, like, <clears throat> despite this massive almost 20,000 gold lead, though, it is still taking Griffin some time to get into the base. Atrox is super, super massive. Rest in peace, buddy. You're no longer here. And now Griffin's just going to press the go button. King's Own were not in position. They should have just given up mid inhibitor. You can just see this right here. There, there's Krillin. It's like looking at fucking Tien and Yamcha and DBZ. <laughs> oh my god, you're just wondering what they're doing there. God. All right, so it looks like that is going to be the end of the game. I just want to recap um, that Griffin did not do anything spectacular. They lost the map early. They lost the first Infernal. They punished Khan with a gamble that Khan didn't respect. Could they have gotten a small lead from it? Yes. But the fact still remains that Khan should have played around it. They should have still lost the Infernal Dragon. Peanut should not have decided that he's deciding to uh, grief his teammates in competitive. Prey should have had a monstrous CS lead, and he should have gotten first turret down in bottom lane. They should have gotten the second Infernal Drake. But Peanut decided that, you know, that day was not to be today. And the King's Own, I, I feel like King's Own lost this more than Griffin won it. So I have yet to be impressed with uh, the Griffin, uh, Griffin's from this series so far. I'm hoping that game two has something in store. I think Gref uh, Griffin drafted themselves in a very specific way that they needed to make stuff happen, and I think that they failed to set it up. I also think that the colors were more advantageous for King Zone than Griffin. If you were to flip the two teams, what would it mean? Uh, if you do flip the two teams, Griffin has access more so to a 1-3-1, one, one, and obviously Zoe cannot do the obnoxious thing that she can do from the vicinity of her blue side jungle, and it puts a little bit more pressure on Prey and Khan in order to make something happen. Um, but, you know, likewise, Sword gets more access, Chovy gets more access, and that's what ends up happening if you flip the colors. Uh, the way that the mid to late game transition plays out entirely differently. Also, the early game plays out very differently because then Peanut, who would be wanting to protect the bottom right hand side of the map, is now incentivized to counter jungle the enemy wraiths, play around his own wolves and his gromp, and protect uh, Cho or protect Zoe from the right hand side, um, giving up a lot of pressure up to top lane. Which means that if uh, Chovy ends up getting priority in mid lane for any reason whatsoever, Tarzan and Sword are able to easier or have an easier time coordinating a dive against Mundo, who would be on red side. Um, so with all of this being said, King Zone won draft. King Zone won the first few levels. They decimated them. Peanut single-handedly threw the game. Peanut, pe peanuts like when you when you go on a you know certain websites and you you search a certain term and you see someone on their knees surrounded by a lot of people, and you're wondering why everyone's in underwear. That's what that's what just what's, happened what's here. That term? I, I don't what's know. I, I don't know. It gets me every time. All right, we're gonna move on to game two.